So in my last PS2 video, I mentioned that when installing the free McBoot software, it allow you to open up the gate to many other mods that you can install onto your PS2. One of those mods that I want to cover today is called Open PS2 Loader. Essentially, this will allow you to take your PS2 ROMs, put them on a USB, and be able to load them onto your PS2. And if you're using the fat PS2, then maybe a hard drive. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All you're going to need is a PS2 memory card, preferably OEM with free McBoot installed. And if you haven't seen my tutorial, I'll leave a link down below on how to install free McBoot. And then you're also going to need a uh, USB flash drive with enough storage. I also want to note, I left a compatibility link down below if you guys want to check that out. Now, yes, loading ROMs from a USB is not the total ideal way. You may notice some longer load times when booting up the game, going into different screens, etc. Because the read and write speeds are not as fast as a hard drive. Do keep that in mind. Right, so to start off, we're going to plug in our USB drive. And then the first thing we want to do once that's plugged in is that we need to format our USB drive to FAT32. Now I'm going to be using a program called FAT32 Format, and I've also provided a link for that down below. All you've got to do is head to the website, click on this PNG, and install the program. And once you have that installed, you run it as an administrator. You're going to want to find your USB drive's letter, and in our case, ours is letter E. So we're going to choose letter E, and then we're going to hit start. And then once it's done, it'll say that it's done. And then we can close out of this. Now we're going to install OPL. And with using the link down below, we can pull up this page, which will bring us to the GitHub post. And you're going to click on opl.zip once you have that installed. So I have a few example games that we're going to be using. And since FAT32 won't allow us to recognize ISO files for PS2 that exceed over four gigabytes, we're going to have to separate those game files into different sizes. And by doing that, we're going to have to install USB util. And using the provided link that I've given, it'll bring you to a download link. Download this file here. And once you've got it ready to go, open and launch the program. And from here, we're going to take our ISO that exceeds four gigabytes, and we're gonna create a game from ISO. You're going to find that ISO wherever you have it on your computer. So for me, it's going to be on the desktop. And then we're gonna hit silenthill.iso. And where we want it to go to is our USB drive, which is under letter E. And for media, we're gonna select the DVD option. And then from here, you can create. This might take a little bit of time. And once that's finished, we can then close out of this. And it's going to say that the status is OK. And on our USB drive here, it's going to create all of these other files, which these you do not have to worry about. Leave these files where they are. But all of these files have just a small portion of the game on them. So essentially, all of these is the entirety of Silent Hill 2. As for our other two example games, I'm just going to highlight those and copy them over. Now that we have our ISOs transferred over, we can then go over and jump into OPL Manager. With the link that I provided, it'll bring you to this page. You'll click this highlighted portion here and download the zip file. And once downloaded and extracted, it'll bring out this program. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. That's gonna say no CD or DVD or art folder has been found in the selected OPL folder. Make sure this is a correct folder. E. I'm gonna hit OK, and it's going to ask you if it wants to create an art, CFG, CD, DVD folders. You're gonna go ahead and click yes. Now this is going to create all the folders that OPL is going to recognize once we load it up onto our system. We'll come to notice that only one of our games has showed up. That's because both of our disk image files aren't under the DVD folder. So we're going to take our 
disk image files and throw them into the DVD folder. And from here, I'm going to just restart the program. And now with the program restarted, it's going to say that there's two invalid files showing invalid files tab. I'm going to hit OK and it's going to show us the invalid files. And from here, we can just highlight one of them. And we're going to try to update file name. I'm going to click yes. And it's going to move them over to home. And just to show you again, I'm going to come here, try to update file name, and then hit yes. If they show up on this home tab, it means that it is a valid .iso file. And now with OPL Manager, you are going to be able to edit the CFG so we can edit the ratings for each games. So for Kingdom Hearts, I believe it's E10 plus. And you can also get the title of the game. And from here we can save. And we can do this to each one of our other games. Get title, okay, save, as well for Silent Hill 2. Get title, okay, rated M, save. Since OPL uses image files to show cover art, we can also change the art for each one of our games here. So we can come down to manage art, select on this background, you can change the disc, the spine, front cover, back cover, screenshots of the game, as well as the logo. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the rest of my games. And with the rest of my cover arts customized, we can then just close this out and we can also eject our USB drive. Now we can move on to our PS2 system. Now with our PS2, we can plug in our free McBoot memory card. Our USB with our ISOs. And from here, just boot up your PlayStation. Now with our PlayStation booted up, we can come under Launch Elf, and we'll open this up, go to our file browser. We'll go down to here to our mass drive, hitting Circle. And down here to our .elf file with OPL. We're going to hit R1 circle to copy and then we'll come back to the two dots in the slash hit circle back up here to memory card zero and at the two dots in the slash we can hit r1 and circle to paste this is just going to copy over opl and all of its files also creating a, another OPL file along with the .l file once we run the program and before I launch OPL I'm going to make a shortcut for the main menu screen using free McBoot configurator so we can start by doing that by just restarting our system here and we're gonna want to come down to free McBoot configurator can either hit circle or X and we're going to come down to configure OSD SYS options and then down to configure item and we're going to go over and configure the menu option to item 6 which is empty we're going to hit X going to name this open ps2 loader and we're going to hit ok under path one we're going to choose memory card zero and we're going to come down to where the dot file is 
and choose that. And then we're going to return and then triangle to return again. And we're going to come down here to where it says save CNF to memory card zero. And on the top in red there, it's going to say saved in memory card zero. And then we can exit back out from our memory card. And if we come down here, it's going to say open PS2 loader under option six. We're going to go ahead and boot it up. And if everything's done correctly, you should be pinned up to the OPL screen. From here, we can hit settings. And the only setting that we're going to need to change here is BDM start mode. We're just going to simply switch this one to auto. And then we're going to go down here and hit OK. And in display settings, we can turn on automatic refresh as well as our cover arts that we edited. And to confirm those settings, we're going to come down here and hit OK. And then we're going to save changes. And from here, you can restart your system once again. Coming down to open PS2 loader again. And then once back in the menu, we can hit circle to go to our games list. And if everything is done correctly, all of your games from your USB should show up under USB games here. Again, I do want to mention that loading PS2 games off of your USB can cause to have longer load times when initially running the game and going throughout different loading screens inside of the game as well. Just to test things, let's open up Kingdom Hearts. And we'll come to see that everything loads up just fine. And there you have it. You can now load PS2 games right from your USB drive. If you have any questions or concerns with the guide, do leave it down in the comments below. If you found it helpful at all, do drop a like as well. Let me know if you guys want me to cover any other PS2 related modifications. But until the next video, deuces.